All right, guys, real quick, real quick. Let's talk real quick. Now, as you can see, I got the engine in. It's not bolted down. It's not bolted to the trans or nothing. What you got, if you're doing this, I mean, I'm sure the engine installers know most of this, but like I say, I have some uh, some uh, beginners on my channel, so I figure I'd just talk about it anyway. You all know you have to bolt, align the transmission up to the block uh, perfectly. And uh, the way that they help you do that is uh, with the use of uh, dial pins. You see this one right here? And there's one on the other side. So because this engine is just, just dangling in here, what I got to do at this point is align it up. Uh, in some cases, you will, you should have had a jack under the transmission so the transmission would come up. And you would just simply be able to push the block in this way and gloop, and it'll bolt everything down. But once you get the transmission bolted to the block, then you can put your uh, mount on this side and the engine will be stable at that point. You can start installing your accessories. But one thing I want to mention is, uh, I'm sure y'all know, this is a shield, a shim. Shim uh, separates the trans from the engine. Be sure you reuse this. Uh, I've never went in without it, so I don't know what would happen if you don't use it. I just... For some reason, think that's important. You should use it. Okay, so I got all that in. Got the engine in. Now, this is probably as far as I can go as far as filming. If not, I will just fire it up some more. But I'm going to bolt this sucker down and put all this whole engine on it. What I had to do is get all the all the old stuff off the other engine. So I'm going to bolt this joker down. Intake on all the accessories, all the wiring. And uh, hopefully I'll fire it up uh, see what happens. One thing that concerned me, guys, let me tell y'all, because I got to go tell the manager. Remember, this van was underwater, right? Which means the AC compressor and the alternator was under warranty. And they look pretty rusted up bad. I got them stored over there on the table. So I'm not sure if those parts are going to work. I'm not sure if that alternator is going to charge. I'm not sure if that AC compressor is going to even run. Remember, I assumed the van was underwater about up to this height. Okay. So, because the intake air inlet is right here, so <laughs> quite naturally you would think they had to be that low on the water for water to even work its way uh, through the engine. Okay, so the AC compressor is lower than this point, and the alternator is also lower than this point. So, those two have to have been affected by the water. But we won't know. I mean, I personally would ask them to get me two new ones but they want me to put it on and find out what happened i mean it's a chance they take because they're gonna have to pay me to take it back off i just hate taking stuff on and off on and off especially when i got it out of the car it's so much easier to put on at that point all right guys i'm talking too much let me uh get this engine bolted up to this trans and this mount all right guys here we are i got it in baby got it in this used engine now couple things that concern me like I say I don't know the condition you can see the how that alternator look okay you can actually see it looks like it been submerged into water and of course the compressor was likely submerged into water so I don't know how each one of those are going to react uh, to a new to this new environment all right so I got all the exhaust on as you can see Everything's bolted up. I'm changing the oil. Now, I didn't like the way this oil looked coming out, but after all, it's a used engine. Whatever you do, anytime you replace an engine, use or new. Go in with new oil. All right, so pretty much got everything under the bottom hooked up. Got the wheels, tires on, motor mount. Everything that was unhooked is now back connected. All right, you always want to do one little last visual inspection make sure now i did have to drain the ac because i had the compressor off so i will have to evac and recharge the system okay do not leave out the evac part all right uh don't just charge it in other words try to pull some of that moisture out you had the lines open so uh that's another video we'll talk about ac in the summertime but for now uh all right let me put my Drain plug back on here. I got as much oil out as it's gonna come out. Change the filter. You know this is a 3.6. The filter is up top. And uh, I'm gonna let this car down. We're gonna get to it, man. So hang tight, hold tight. I'm gonna go to air break. I will be right back. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for staying tuned. Thanks for sticking with me. Now I'm at the 
top end of the car now I'm getting ready to change the oil well I've already changed the oil I'm changing the filter now and uh this is something man that uh look at that y'all see that oh man this is something that really disturbs me or bothers me that's why I say man the risk in getting oh good lord that's all sludged up the risk in getting these uh used engines you don't know what kind of condition this is it that is a strict oh okay uh let me vent for a little bit off off camera hold on all right guys i'm back i just had to go vent and assure the service guy that i'm not responsible y'all see that that's the old filter he said proceed so i mean we we too far committed anyway to be trying to turn back so I am in the last stages of this engine oil filter going on. Uh, as you can see, I have my bleeder funnel here where I'm bleeding the cooling system. I am going in with a uh, new five-year coolant, Mopar five-year coolant. And the oil that I put in, uh, 5W20. Okay, the brand we use is a uh, Valvoline here. Okay, Valvoline makes some good product. Okay, I have now jumped on the Valvoline bandwagon. In fact, in a future video, I'm gonna do a, uh, I'm gonna do a video on what I think about the transmission fluid, the multi-vehicle transmission fluid. I, I have a new perspective on it after being explained by one of the Valvoline reps. Okay, they uh. I guess I needed a little insurance. Now I still I'm not gonna do it. Uh, any kind of Valvoline product, uh, as far as transmission. You know, when you're dealing with warranty, you got to use uh, what fluid that they recommend. But uh, on my own stuff, on my own uh, work that I do at home and on uh, at other shops, I will be bringing Valvoline on board. So that's about full. I had already put one gallon in it. Yeah, you can see it's brand new coolant. Brand new oil, oil chain. We about to fire this thing up, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, get all the bubbles out. Always bleed the cooling system. I love this funnel. I don't know what we was doing without it. Okay, of course we had to, uh, we had to bleed it a different way. We were still bleeding, we are just doing it a different way. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's fire this thing up. And, uh, see what happens okay i'll take y'all on for the we're gonna call it the firing up ceremony remember we had the battery disconnected i hope i still got some juice i'm just gonna set that on there for now just to see if i got enough juice to fire it up let's see ladies and gentlemen all right let's fire this thing up oh battery dead ladies and gentlemen i gotta get my jump box so this is a good time to go to an ad break. <laughs> uh, let me go grab my jump box. We're gonna jump this thing up and fire it up. I'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. Thanks for staying with me. Oh, it only has eight volts. All right, so I have my jump box on it. Let me turn it on. 12.8, let's fire it up and see what the world's gonna happen. Here we go. Oh, come on, baby. Mm, I hear some noise. Come on, that's that new, that's that sound engines make when they haven't ran in a while. All kinds of pulley noise. Wow, 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 guys. Oh, this running, um, I hear a tick. <laughs> I don't know what crazy company would take a chance on the first generation 3.6 Pentastar engine. You don't know what you're getting. You don't know if the valve train ticking. You don't know anything. And as you saw, uh, the oil filter was heavily sludged. Let me take a look at the... Look at that. Y'all see when your dipstick look like that? That means this engine wasn't taken care of. Now I'm going to turn it off and check the oil properly, but it has five quart, five and a half quarts of 520 in it. I know... I just want to take a look at the stick. But like I say, out here in pulley noises, who knows, water pump, island pulley. I spent, remember I spent uh, the pulleys on the, when I had the 
engine over there on the ground so i did replace that pulley now i didn't feel any other pulleys keeping up any noise so i didn't think nothing else about it but i'm hearing noises over there now could be the water pump could be the island pulley could be those water infused parts i mentioned earlier such as the compressor and the alternator at any rate i don't know they just wanted me to put it in it's done it's running <laughs> i'll see where they want to go from here all right so that's all i have i'm gonna wrap this series up remember this is a three six uh i recap you with videos right here i'm gonna put the video when i first went out to diagnose it all right we found out it would not spin over because it had hydrolyzed it had water in the intake and water had made its way into the engine and as you know you cannot compress water all right after that that was two parts so after that uh i thought that was the last i've heard of it um two days later i had an engine sitting in my bay for me to install all right got it installed oh i remember i pushed it in matter of fact this video right here where we finally got it pushed into the shop to install the engine all right so uh in fact this video right here is where we installed it the video i'm doing now actually is where we installed it so i got it all in and uh that's it man i'm done with this i got to move on to something else i got two transmission waiting on me now let me tell y'all something about this engine that i take took took out okay i had big plans for this but i just found out weaver that's the savage yard they use <laughs> won't they engine back y'all god i know i know i know i know uh remember i had plans to tear it apart and find out why it was seized i mean we all can speculate that a rod is bent that could be the fact but uh i now i can't even go that route i wanted to take the timing cover off and show y'all the timing setup and how to put it back in time if you was to do some uh rock arms and stuff like that but all of that those plans are shot now but i'm sure we'll get a used 360 here so i have to turn this one back in they got a core charge on it all right so that's all i have ladies and gentlemen thanks for watching comment subscribe and i'll see y'all in the next video